kind of frightening. <laughs> Let's call the order of Parks Board meeting of Monday, October the 28th. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please. I'll handle that since I've been gone a while. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That avoid me, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> if I don't hear that, we're not going forward, I promise. <laughs> Do we have any citizens comment, sir? There's not. Thank you, sir. I'll, uh, I hope you've had a chance to look over the minutes. I'll uh, accept a motion to approve the minutes, uh, Mr. Pike. Uh, second, Mr. Frank, discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? No, of course not. That's great. Uh, connect committee report. Yeah, every, everything went well this this past meeting. Um, the two clubs are, are moving forward and coming up with a plan of um, trying try to come up with a plan this coming spring of, of how they'll do some player development and coaching development. Um, the, the this past fall, they Tennessee and I provided some free uh, goalkeeper training and um, rec soccer. I participated in that, and they both clubs got positive feedback from their parents and their players on that. Um, so now they're looking forward to, to doing a little bit more in the spring. Rec Soccer took that to their board. They approved um, uh, for kids to be able to sign up through Rec Soccer, and then um, Rec Soccer would, would pay those fees for the, the coaching fees to Tennessee United. Um, at this point, Tennessee United is going back to their – um, coaches and their board to figure out how they can staff it. They're a little concerned this this spring if they have the the manpower to do that. They're going to look at doing some things on Friday nights, um, but we'll know a little bit more in the November meeting. Um, if if they're not able to go full full go this coming spring, they will look to do something more in in the fall once they once they're able to, to staff their, their coaches a little more and, and, and hire some more coaches. But that's kind of where things stand from this past meeting. Um, we'll know a little bit more in November. And other than that, um, we're just kind of talking about some park improvement plans. Um, we, we got a list of stuff that we're going to try to do this winter. And I know Rec Soccer is looking to put some money in, into improving the bathrooms out there. So it's going well. Um, Everyone's working together, and, and I think it's very positive. Very good questions. You, you, in your opinion, I mean, is this? I don't know exactly how to how to phrase this. Is it going well? You think? I think so. Yeah, it's it's going a lot better than it was probably five months ago. So good job. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Thank you, sir. Under Old Business Parks Project Updates, Mr. Gilly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a list here to go over. It will be as brief as possible. Uh, we are about to wrap up the renovation of the women's tennis restroom as well as the installation of uh, changing facilities, uh, changing room areas for men and women at the tennis complex. Uh, the Public Works Committee is getting estimates on paving the parking lot at Memorial Park. And uh, light poles and lights were delivered today that will uh, be installed in the parking lot at Memorial Park. So that um, is going well. We've got a lot going on over there that to update that facility that's going to be good. Um, the LED light uh, project, you know, the, the Board of Mayor and Alderman approved 400000 390 ish um, for us to do LED light replacement. The Memorial Park's included in that. We've got one baseball field going to be uh, done and, and we're waiting on a grant application from the U.S. Soccer Foundation um, for $50,000 to add to the amount that we were going to do in soccer. So right now we're going to we were going to do fields one through four in soccer. We hope to expand on that uh, if we can get that grant. We'll know in December. Uh, inline hockey, the request for qualifications to vendors to give us drawings for that project, uh, the relocation project. We hope to get those out this week, hope to select a vendor in, in early November that will give us drawings for that project. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, security cameras will be installed at all the entrances of Drake's Creek Memorial Park and Veterans Park. Um, we hope by Thanksgiving, that's our goal, it could be first part of December. 
um, we will soon have uh, back we did meet with Los, Los Design um, to discuss flood protection for Mary's Magical Place uh, they gave us two or three options we kind of told them what we felt was the, the best one for them to expand further on uh, that eventually will come to you guys for your approval um, the plan is to sort of build a berm to protect the playground and take the existing space where inline hockey is and turn that into grass athletic fields for what we could use for multi-use could be soccer lacrosse flag football whatever just uh, dif different things there um, also we completed and had the dedication ceremony yesterday for the peace garden at memorial park that's a beautiful project um, just a, it was a good day yesterday the weather broke right at three o'clock when they had their ceremony that was a good 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 project by our maintenance staff to get that done on a tight deadline so if anybody has any questions i'll take them about any of those projects or ones i might not have mentioned silence is deafening love it thank you very much sir yes sir under new business wild pitch baseball tournament mr pettigo Wild pitch. That's troubling. <laughs> hey, Derek, get over here. Come right up here to the podium. Right. Wild pitch. Yes, sir. Are we good now? Yeah, okay. I got you. State your name, please. Derek Pedigo. Yes, sir. Um, so yeah, we uh, we talked about it and wanted to try to get dates locked down for a couple of tournaments in the spring season and then maybe three in the fall to offer some weekend tournaments, probably looking at eight, nine, and ten U divisions. Um, and we, we think we can, you know, use, utilize probably the three fields at VETS more often um, to do that. And if there's available fields at Drake's, depending on the amount of teams, stuff like that, possibility. Um, but we are working with the Civitan Club on the uh, the dates and all going through the Civitan Club for any of that. Okay. I don't know what info y'all need at this point. Um, like I say, we're just looking at what date options we have and what we might be able to do. Question? Yes, sir. Uh, on the back, I'm, I'm, you say this is for profit, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and where will those funds go, sir? Um, the funds for the you know clear profit of it would go back to us too. So we're looking at trying to expand it over time, but starting with something reasonable, not expecting to host 20 tournaments in the first year. Okay. Any other questions? I just, yes, sir. Uh, Andy, Keith, any y'all ain't have anything to share? Have y'all talked to the talked about this with these? Gentlemen? We we met with uh, Randy and Derek in our office. Uh, they understand that they would be subject to working with a civic group, just like at the same rates that any other tournament vendor that comes in would would be. Um, I believe they understand that. Absolutely. Sure. Yes, sir. Um, so, you, you know, when it says for profit, I think they understand that they're, at the end of the day, there's really not a lot of profit in a in a tournament like that. Um, there are people that do it for a living. I don't think these guys are trying to do it for a living. They're trying to do it being local guys here that uh, see a need for, um, There's you know, there's teams from Clarksville, Kentucky, from Hendersonville, White House, that, that are tired of driving to Murfreesboro. Or, or south of Nashville all the time, and, and they're trying to fill a, a need in that area, I think. Um, and and I think they will, they will amicably give back their portion of the funds to whatever civic group, they, Civitan clubs, what right. they've chosen. And uh, as we know, we do that so that that money goes back into the park. So, you know, if we, if we can find the dates, it's, it's going to be tough in the spring to find right. dates. I think next fall is more likely to find things that work. Um, and then going forward, maybe we can, can find some more, but they're willing to work with the staff to, to do that, I think. And I'll let our staff comment they want to further. No, I mean, I think the big thing is going to be the dates. That's the biggest thing we've got. 
it's not uncommon for the U Triple S A softball stuff like that. Those guys are making money too. It's just as long as they're paying their portion back to the city is what we're asking people to do. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's quite a few tournaments in our park. Individuals are are making money. There's okay. no, I mean, that's no secret. Yeah, that part of it. But um, yeah, the big thing is going to be dates because we're getting phone calls almost daily for for people to come in and host tournaments. The word's gotten out that we're sort of open it up a little bit more and we are got considerable more tournaments already scheduled for 2020 next year than we've had in the past at this point yeah yep. that's more concession stands for jimmy to be working mm -hmm. i think he's pleased about that <laughs> well i understand the uh i understand the not going to Murfreesboro. i'm sure people are tired of going over to Murfreesboro. that's a that's a and beautiful there, facility but it i mean it's a and there is different, and, and from their point standpoint, is there's different levels of travel ball, yeah. and they've going to try to get a little niche themselves. Right. Um, you know, the guy out of St. Louis, he's the high end guy. The GMB, he wants the high end stuff. Okay. These guys may get more of a local flavor to it. So there's a little niche. Game seven's local. Most of their teams are local. So it's just a little different niche of what you want or what you're going for. And I think they're doing a good job of do, start with eight, nine, ten year olds. I think they would struggle to get 13s and above. So, ideally, when when are you flexible enough to 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 hold this when they can have space or oh, you have an ideal time? Yeah, I mean we're look. This is this is first go around on this, so we're we're at the dates that are available as mercy, and we're 100 percent flexible on that. Um, we've even looked, you know, hey. There's a lot of times where Memorial Day weekend or Mother's Day weekend, not very often that tournaments are hosted. Um, we're open to that. We've talked to a lot of the coaches around in the area, and a lot of them are willing to play those weekends. Um, especially on the north side of Nashville, there's not much hosted throughout the spring or the fall. Good job. Um, okay. And that, that central Kentucky area is going all the way to Murfreesboro. Week in, week out. They're going from Franklin and uh, Bowling Green consistently. Um, so there's just not an offering on this side of town. I think your willingness so, to work with the dates is a good job there. Yeah. That's good. Any other questions? What are you doing for insurance? Just what? So insurance will be, Sorry. we'll purchase it per team ahead of the date um, because it's not, it's not offered for the tournament style without being offered per team. So it runs usually, what I'm finding on quotes is anywhere from $8.50 per team to twelve fifty per team. Um, so that, that gives us a little bit of protection to not have to go out and buy a policy for an annual basis. And we can pick that up on Wednesday or Thursday when we set a full slate of brackets. We know exactly how many teams we've got to cover. Um, and that is well within the park's requirement of the policy requirement. Yes, sir. Mr. White, do you have a question, sir? One thing I was thinking about is this age group, I remember years ago having more to do with this age group, and I know that we have a lot of things going on in the spring, but we used to go down to Goodlesville to do a little kickoff thing, and it was eight- and nine-year-olds down there mm -hmm. then. So there might be a weekend in there amongst all the play days that, before the season starts, you might look at okay. it. Okay. I, I don't know if that would be, but I know that thing in Goodlesville years ago was huge for 8U and 10U teams. Yeah, I started to say, I think they did one this past spring, um, mid-March maybe, something like that, uh, prior to their rec season starting. Um, I know they had it in 10U division. I don't know what all divisions they had. Okay. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve, Ms. Ted. Second, Mr. Pike. Any more discussion? What would be the procedure on securing dates? I just want to do the public. You want to make that? I think that would be, yeah, that would be a. So, motion to approve based on working with the park staff to secure dates. Based on what he said. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll second. And second, Mr. Pike. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. I was about halfway afraid not to do it because he looked like he was about to whip me. <laughs> <laughs> He's all looks. He's all looks anyways. Don't worry about him. 
Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Discussion, November, December meeting dates, Mr. Gilly. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. We wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of the dates of the meetings. As Keith said, we are having people call. We had a, a gentleman call this afternoon at 3 o'clock wanting to do a national senior men's softball tournament in August. <laughs> I mean, it's every day, literally every day. So I'm afraid to cancel a meeting because somebody might need something approved. Um, the meeting in November would be scheduled for the Monday before Thanksgiving. I, I don't know that that would present a big problem. Um, the meeting in December would, would fall on the, the 23rd, which probably would present a big problem. So I'm, we're up for anything. Just doesn't need to be on a Tuesday necessarily here. Can we bump it up a week? Yes, what are we going to do? We're not bound by anything. No, we can do whatever you all decide to do. We no, could. Don't up a week, not down. I don't. Yeah. We'll have to make sure the room's open. We'll, we'll have to double check the room. Uh, if that's what you want to do, the, the 18th and the 16th of December, unless somebody has a. Yeah, well, the 18th, we'll all be at conference. Ah, we, November, that's right. So. We, we had talked about the 18th of November. We would be in Chattanooga at a conference we could maybe do the 21st the thursday b before perhaps i mean it's the week of thanksgiving i, I don't care to if, if y'all are okay with that we'll leave november alone and maybe bump december up a week okay probably need a motion to do that then okay motion to do what he said motion to move the december meeting up one week i think mr bennett first mr head second any more discussion Mr. Chairman. Yes, indeed. Any more? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just in the motion, if Monday doesn't work because the room is taken with Wednesday, usually this room is open every Wednesday. So if if their Monday is a planning commission or something like that, the next option in this room would probably be a Wednesday, if that's all right with the board. So I would. If it's money doesn't work, is would Wednesday work for the board? Did it need to be in the form of the motion in it? Well, that's probably needs to be. We probably need to be the 16th or the 18th, depending on what the November, room. December, not yes, November. December. Yeah. And I motion 11:25 for November and either 12:16 or 12:18 for December. Uh, the availability of the room. November. Or November, December 16th or 18th. Correct. Yeah, not moving. Are we to a place we can vote now? Cause yeah, because. What I thought. Yeah. Kind of got a little confused. I'm an old guy. So, all right. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Not that far Boy, that was tough. By the way, I had a I had a lady the other day in the market that said, You look just like Santa Claus. And I said, Are you sure I'm not? <laughs> she said, I'll talk to you later. So that's all right. I really am, you know. Uh, CPR training, Mr. Long. Thank you. Um, we talked you briefly a couple months ago about. <laughs> CPR training, and you know, some some of the clubs in in, in our parks are, are doing it. Mostly Civitan is doing it. We started doing it with our um, fall baseball league this past year. Um, but you know we've talked to staff, and we would like to move forward with um, having every club that plays in the park go through CPR training, whether that's um, you know something that they that they put on themselves, or or they work with Tammy Neal or, or someone else, fire department, who, whoever whoever it be. So um, I guess I'd like to kind of bring that up for discussion, see if that's um, something everyone here agrees on, and um, possibly starting the year of 2020, all clubs need to um, start providing CPR training. We have talked uh, with it uh, with, with both soccer clubs and the Connect Committee meeting about doing that. Um, so uh, from, from my knowledge, I know that neither soccer club's currently doing it, and I don't know if hockey is doing it, and I don't know if lacrosse is doing it. So those would probably be the, the four sports that would need to start doing that in addition to who's, who's already doing it. Is that, a, is that an in-house thing, or do we need to, to have a motion for that, sir? The, the in-house as far as who does the training? No. No, I mean just generally. I mean, are you asking for our blessing to do that, or are you telling us you're going to do that? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking for your blessing that to to have every club or sport that plays in the park go through the CPR and make sure all coaches are CPR trained. I see. You want to have or, something to bring up? Hey, Dallas. Um, since there's numerous coaches that coach different sports throughout the year, 
if they got went through the CPR for one, would that be acceptable to keep it for the rest of sports for a calendar year? Yes, that, that's great. Um, so if, if you go through the training, it lasts two years. Um, and so you have to renew it every two years. I know currently right now only Tammy Neal's the one that, that's mm -hmm. doing it for, for all of Civitan, and she also provided it for fall baseball. So she has a running list of every coach that's gone through it. Um, if, if, someone, if someone had to do CPR training for work or whatever, then they would just provide their car that, that they've already completed it, and then we would add them to the list. Okay. Um, uh, as Annie just mentioned to me, we, we just hired an, a new rec coordinator um, who – He's trained in, in teaching CPR training as well, so we plan to utilize him to, to do our leagues here in that that we run like summer baseball and fall baseball. Um, but we would kind of leave it up to each club of who they want their I guess teacher to be. If you know Civitan uses Tammy Neal, if Tennessee Nine wants to use someone else, that would be fine. Um, we would just need to get the list from Tammy or from our our new employee to to whoever the teacher is to make sure that they're aware of who's training and who's not. I'll uh, entertain a motion to, to start I, the... I have a, a question. Listen, that yeah. we're, we're looking at this being all coaches, head coaches, and assistants. The the way we we've we've done it because um, we just we just went through the um, the, the safe stars program um, it's it's two coaches per team so it's um, head coach and assistant coach per team so as long as we have two coaches on on every, at every practice or, or or field for games then then that covers it. it's not every coach so I might have misspoken there very what very briefly what what does the training entail what what kind of a no. It, it, it's like a it's like a two two and a half hour uh, CPR AED training, um, and they, they get a cert, they get certified at the end. And I'm assuming that if they complete that, they would be CPR trained in other factions. Is that correct? I mean, not really, but I mean, right. th that would help everybody. I think. That's right. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Yeah. Go through it with the dummy and all that. Yeah, that's they correct. They could use you. So. I could use them. Yeah. You get, train, you get trained on, you know, youth, youth and adult training on how to handle youth and adults. <laughs> and the, the, the teams that Sorry. just have a single coach, Love we're me. not looking to pull somebody else from the team to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's if it's a single coach, then um, then it would just be that 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 coach. So there wouldn't be an option of which coaches get to pick, I guess. I will entertain a motion now. I'll make the motion. Okay, Mr. Pike makes a motion. Mr. Head second. Uh, any more discussion? You know, I, you, go ahead, I'm sorry. Just, just from a logistical standpoint, <clears throat> is, is the capacity to make sure that there are frequent enough uh, sessions offered for training and available people and costs and things like that, is that – is that applicable? Somebody doesn't need to go crazy tracking all this down. And, and what is the yeah, sanction yeah. if somebody sh just says, I'm not doing it kind of thing? I know we can say you're not going to coach, but is the capacity there to man it to manpower to, to handle all that? I'll answer that. Uh, one of the main functions of our new um, full-time, Ms. Hamlin is not going anywhere, by the way, but our new full-time rec coordinator will be to um, – keep up with things just like this. The fact that he is actually able to teach the classes will allow us to do it more frequently, I hope. Um, and I would say yes, if you all pass this and somebody says I'm not going to do it, then they're not going to coach. So that kind of gives us teeth. But there's, there's a lot of things that um, internally, things like ejections, um, things like who's done what training, things like who has signed up for what course that we need help keeping up with that uh, are, is going to be a big help having that extra person in the office. And this is definitely one of them. I think that answered the question. Do you want to add into it? Any more discussion? Yes, sir. I would just say this. Uh, I've done that training course with Tammy several times and never thought I'd have to use it until last summer, <laughs> okay, or until this past summer. 
and we had that gentleman uh, collapse on the uh, track by field eight and nine. So uh, you, you, if if you don't want to do it, you need to think about it because you never know when you're going to do it. I mean, it was spontaneous reaction and going through that class several times probably be, helped myself be able to just not panic, not worry about it, just grab the AED machine, get out there, start doing the CPR, using the AED machine, and giving the man a chance until the fire department got there. So you need to do it. That's the right thing. And that, that being said, it wouldn't be a bad idea at all as much as the board here is in the park for us to do the same thing. Uh, I'd be open to doing that any time, so uh, I'd love to see everybody do it. So I've got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Uh, for my information, the list, is it complete? <laughs> Ms. Wise? <laughs> it should be. Beautiful and lovely and stunningly <laughs> great, Miss Wise. I'll it's make, great to have you back. I'll make up for I'm that just one sad. day. <laughs> Under staff reports, does anybody have Miss Hamlin tonight? I do. I'm going to be Cindy tonight. Go right ahead, ma'am. <laughs> She's pretty, too. <laughs> i got to say that. <laughs> All right. Um, the preschool track meet was Sunday, October 13th. Um, the weather was perfect, had approximately 125 three, four, and five-year-olds registered. They participated in a 25-yard dash, tennis ball throw, hurdles, and optional mini-mile run. Um, there were great compliments from parents and those who replied back. Some even shared pictures and videos and stated they had a blast and can't wait for next year. Um, Cindy would like to thank all the people and students who came and helped volunteer to make this such a successful event. Um, Trick or Treat at Drake's Creek is tomorrow night, Oct uh, October 29th, begins at 6 o'clock um, to be held near um, the soccer trail, back soccer trail. Um, lunch with Santa will be December 14th this year at Witten Elementary, is that correct? correct. Okay. Close enough. There will be two sessions, 10.30 to 11.45 and 12.30 to 1.45. Um, there's a max of 75 per session. Um, they must be pre-registered and must choose a session. It is a free event. Children will get to visit with Santa and eat pizza. And registration will begin on Monday, November 11th. And then finally, a special friends visit with Santa will be scheduled as well. Um, check the website for further details. Right now, it's tentatively Thursday, December 12th, um, 5 to 7 p.m. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> that's a ton. Just pull that out of your hat right there. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Miss. Wise Cindy thing <laughs> there. Uh, under My special, pleasure. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Special events program <clears> the <throat> same, Miss Wise. Um, this month we had the Hendersonville High School fishing tournament. Um, we also had football for the cure, which was last Sunday. They raised about fifteen hundred dollars, and they had the biggest participation yet. Um, and then this past weekend we had the crappy, yeah, crappy fishing tournament. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Despite the weather, they still had a good turnout. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, it's crappy. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> so you get that one out of your hat. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Um, coming up, as Cindy said, there is trick or treat tomorrow night. We have about 50 booths participating, um, the most we've had yet. Um, some new additions this year are food trucks. We're having a photographer come out and take pictures of the kids in their costumes, and we're also having a movie. Um, the City Hall Pumpkin Carving Contest. Um, each department is carving a pumpkin, um, so make sure to stop by tomorrow and vote for your favorite. The Parks Department will be having a pumpkin. Um, Hay Rides and Hiking the Hills is November 9th at the Beatty Farm. Um, it's a great opportunity to see, th to see this hidden property. Um, the Veterans Parade is November 10th. 
Um, and then we also have the uh, DAR dedication ceremony on November 17th. And then um, coming up in December, thinking about Christmas already, um, the Festival, Festival of Lights, um, which is a new event this year with the Holiday Fest, begins December 1st and runs through December 15th. And that's all that I wrote. You've been thinking about that all day, hadn't you? That, <laughs> pull it out of your, that's all she wrote, thing. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Watt. What was her Anytime. name again? No, that's good. That's all right. Uh, Assistant Maintenance Supervisor, Mr. Grenard. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Rugby Complex, we're approximately 30 days into that uh, project out there. The entrance drive and the parking lot phase one is complete. Uh, excavating began uh, last week on both fields. Uh, by Friday, they were laser grading field one, which I'm calling field one the, the field that's close to the parking lot. Um, they did not really get any dirt pushed on the second field yet. With the rain over the weekend, it's probably going to kind of delay that a little bit, so we'll watch it this week and see what happens. Um, but have made some good progress. Also, um, we've put in an ADA walkway that will lead from the parking lot over to where field two is. Um, that was done last week, got that completed, so that that will be a nice addition in a walkway. Um, Eddie's working on fall fertili fertilizing uh, quotes right now. Um, hopefully get working on that in the next few weeks. Once all the play is done, we'd like to have that lined up so that we can put that fertilizer on. We'll wait until everything's complete before we do that. Um, ryegrass went down about three weeks ago. It's really seemed to take off. We haven't mowed it yet. Looks like maybe next week we'll cut all the athletic fields that have the ryegrass on them. be the first time we do that. Um, work began today on a new ADA sidewalk uh, that's going to lead from the the road right behind kids kingdom and it's going to go connect that to the peace garden um to the shelter that's back there by the dog park and eventually all the way back to the dog park we're going to do it in two phases i'm hoping the next couple of weeks it'll all be done but it's going to be a nice addition and and i don't know if you all are aware but the city's going through an ada transition plan project right now um and these are all projects that are going to be things that will come up probably in phase two and phase three of that transition. They're still, we're in phase one of that right now, which is just the planning side of it. I can tell you that crosswalks and sidewalks will be the first, fa the first part of that. But eventually they will get to us in the parks and, you know, we'll have a lot of things. But I think if we keep working on it over the next couple of years, because that's probably how long it will be until it gets to us, I think we can knock some pretty big projects out and make it show that we are making a, uh, a step towards being compliant with that. It, it's going to be huge citywide. I'm involved with that committee and I can tell you it's, it's going to be big. Um, we also uh, will be starting over the next couple of weeks on our Christmas lights. As you heard from Andrew, we've got a lot of different Christmas things coming up. So it's probably a two to three week project with weather to get all those lights put up uh, and we'll be working on that. I think that pretty much ties up. Anybody got any questions? Thank you, Mr. Renan. Mm -hmm. Assistant Director, Mr. Long. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> soccer's ongoing. Re Rec Soccer is scheduled to finish up uh, their, their tournament this coming Saturday. Uh, Tennessee and I will still uh, be ongoing through November 21st. Uh, flag football is also, this is the first season of fall flag football. We have uh, 285 players this season, and they started the week after uh, fall break, and they'll finish up November 16th. Um, this is also the last weekend for the full count baseball league. And then um, we're gearing up for basketball season. We have our um, coaches meeting this Wednesday for high school and the youth league. Um, the, the high school division, we have 22 teams in, in the high school. That's uh, between the rec division and the open teams. And then we'll have uh, four men's teams again this year. Um, practice begins this Saturday. And then um, the high school league games will begin November 14th. And then the rec league will start November, or I'm sorry, December 7th. That's it. Any long questions? Thank you, sir. Assistant Director, uh, Mr. Bruce. Thank you, sir. Uh, a couple things. They are finished up. The fast pitch league finished up last week, got down right before the rain on Thursday. That was a good thing. Uh, the adult softball, the co ed league finished up last week, and also the senior men after their 162-game schedule finished up uh, this past year. 
no play <laughs> with the playoffs and everything else. So they have a good time, man. I, I just hope I'm still playing when I'm 60. Okay, good time. Uh, the kickball's done, finished up. Um, hockey, they were supposed to finish up this weekend, but the rain sort of slowed that down. So hockey should finish up. They're playing a couple finals tonight, and then a couple finals tomorrow, and then hockey should be done uh, after tomorrow night. Uh, lacrosse is still practicing in the outfield. Uh, went down there the other night, and they had quite a few people. I mean, I was the ladies. I think Mike's daughters involved a little bit with that, and they've got some new coaches too, or helping right this fall. So. No, there's a lot of people down there on those fields. So they're doing a good job. Uh, rugby contacted today. They're going to want to practice for a couple of weeks, uh, going to their tournaments and so forth, and with the time change and everything. So we're going to help rugby out a little bit, get them some practice time. Uh, one thing, we lost a tournament this weekend, fast pitch tournament, because of the rain. Uh, he's supposed to be coming back. Going to try to play that on the 16th. So we picked it up late, and then rained it out. And then as of right now, we're going to try to play that the 16th and 17th. So, Jimmy, I'll get with you later about uh, scheduling and so forth once he gets that to Andrea and everything. So uh, another two more big weekends, the 9th and 16th, we could have tournaments, pretty good-sized tournaments at the park. Here it is in the middle of November, and we're still – Still playing. Uh, youth basketball, uh, we helped them with Dallas said We helped them with the practice schedule uh, for the weekends and the game, excuse me, weekends and weekdays. Uh, again, as you all know, the Civitan running run it for this year. Uh, they did a good job with the rating sessions. We, as a staff, were there with them. Um, but I thought they did a good job with the rating sessions. Um, they still need coaches, which is a constant battle. Uh, going back and forth with Chris today about some emails and so forth, so they're still looking for coaches in that part of it. Um, we'll help them with the game schedules, and we're still working out some stuff with schools, availability in that part of it. Um, but, again, we're gonna, we'll see how Saturday goes. be a little test this Wednesday, getting everything together, pieced together for Wednesday, and then the first practices. So you know, hopefully everything goes good on Saturday. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, sir. Parks Director, Mr. Gilly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to follow up on a little bit of what Keith talked about, I, I actually went and met with the lacrosse uh, boys' parents before their meeting started, kind of explained to them how some other projects had gotten done in the park and kind of gave them some ideas how they might be able to accomplish some things they were wanting to accomplish facility-wise. So we'll, we'll see what they come up with throughout the year. Uh, I wanted to thank you all for... Um, kind of giving your blessing via email to the University of Tennessee practice and clinic. Uh, that was a great day. There was over 100 kids that came to a free clinic. The stands were packed for their practice. Their coaches and players were phenomenal to deal with, so I appreciate you all kind of letting us throw that in at the last minute. Uh, we have not met as a parks board um, since we had the big concert in the park on October 1st. I wanted to thank everybody publicly that uh, had help in doing that. Thank you all for your support of it and our staff for uh, putting up with all the logistics that, that led up to that. It was a crazy month or two ahead of time. Um, I believe Andrea mentioned the, the DAR and the VFW tree ceremony on November 17th. Um, just to let everybody know, you all have been invited. I think the Board of Mayor and Alderman was invited uh, to that ceremony be a short ceremony just to kind of honor those that have served with the planting of uh, Alvin C. York tulip poplar tree. I've had to say that about 10 times the last few days so I know how to say it now. I did want to let you know too we had uh, promoted uh, two young men Billy Grizzard and Trevor Cole to uh, Parks crew leaders. Uh, one Billy working with athletics and events and Trevor working with facilities that goes along with kind of what we've we did with uh, Eddie Kemper to, to um, kind of give Jeremy a cohort there down at the park. Um, we did hire, um, well, I can't, you know, he hadn't started yet, but we have a, a made an offer and the man has accepted and cleared to start November 7th, uh, a position in our office that we'll introduce him at the next Parks Board meeting. Don't want to say his name in case something happens, but... Um, also, we got a new part-time employee coming soon. Mr. Eli White will be down at the park with us some. Um, I'm sure his dad will will make sure that they talk about things that need improvement <laughs> as he as he goes through the park. What happened to the 
<laughs> each day. Oh, goodness, the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Just no stories from the maintenance shop. Need to be told at the dinner table, I don't think. No probably. pressure, young man. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I had uh, sent you all, I believe, an email that talked about our five-year plan that we're kind of doing in-house right now. Uh, if you want to come by the office, talk about any of that, or send me an email, a phone call, any, anything you see that's, uh, that you'd like to see changed or you think we've messed up on or things like that, I'm open to anything. Uh, it's kind of a, a wish list. A lot of that is, but some of it is fact-based, and or most of it is fact-based. As we get farther out into the five years, you're talking about hard to plan for at this point. But um, did want you to know it was very serious need. Would love your input if you have time to, to do that. Last thing uh, we found out today, we were um, two awards we were nominated for with the State Tennessee Recreation and Parks Association. Uh, we'll find out at our, uh, our annual conference in November. The Mary's Magical Place was nominated for Best New Facility over a $500,000 project. And um, the Honor the Game program that you all approved was nominated for Innovative Program award so that, that was a good job by a lot of people and really I had clearly had nothing to do with either of those but <laughs> other than just being around but I will uh, <laughs> gladly go with our staff down there and hope that we can uh, win the, one, of, one or both of those and it's just a great job and reflects a lot of hard work by a lot of people so that's all I have questions thank you Miss Gilly on the round table Mr. Perry Mr. Bowler. Glad you're here. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pike. I'm good. Mr. Bennett. I'm good, thank you. Mr. Frank. Just real quickly, um, <clears throat> publicly here, two weeks from today is Veterans Day, and uh, I know that we have a lot of people, not only in this room, but, you know, the six or eight that are watching on TV um, <laughs> with connections with family members or so forth, and, um, you know, we've, um, we've named one of our park system after veterans, we've got you know major thoroughfare, and uh, I think they're an integral part. And I just want everybody to know how appreciative and humble we are uh, for the service, uh, not only of our veterans but our active uh, men and women in reserves. And I know there there's a parade on Sunday the 10th. I know several schools and several organizations are having events, and uh, I just encourage anybody uh, to to make that a priority and get out and um, and show some respect uh, for for those those men and women and uh, appreciate the opportunity to serve in a great city that, that um, honors those people accordingly. We're around because of them. <laughs> we certainly are. Mrs. Edelgren? Yep. Mr. White? Uh, Jeremy, I'll say it again. I hadn't said it in a while. If you could pass along to uh, Eddie, um, that I appreciate what's going on down there. I know this. We're getting late in the year, and Mr. Bruce touched on the fact that we've still got a lot going on down there. Maybe people may think, you know, the seasons have wind, winding down, and there's not a whole lot going on. But uh, uh, I was down there this morning, and uh, those guys are working hard and uh, putting in a lot of effort with everything that's going on still at the park. And I appreciate the job they do every day, the pride they take in their, their job. Thank, you, Thank you, and I'll pass that along. Ms. Ted? All right, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Perry, second. Ms. Who wants to second? Go ahead. He had second. <laughs> okay, we got it. We're out of here. It's all